Can you relate to some of this? Yeah, I know I can. Um, so where do you go from there? When all you can do is just survive, is there another option for you? Is there another option? Sure, sure it is. And, uh, and the book talks about that uh, when, you're, when, you're, when you're looking at your life, you know, are you st what part of your life is stuck in survive mode? When you look at your business plan, what part of your business plan is stuck in survive mode? And then you have to start identifying it first because once you identify it, then you can move to thrive mode. And that's the other option. Uh, this is a conscious decision to take what has happened to you or to change your destiny or change the outcome that you want by putting a fresh plan together it's in order to move forward. And so you make a decision to go from survive mode into what? Thrive mode, okay? And I'm going to talk to you how to do that. The question is, can you decide to thrive through what a particular circumstance right now? Can you choose to do that? Yeah, you sure can. Why do we choose to be to stay stuck in survive mode then? It's easier. That's right. We're already there. We're already there. You can stay there. It's a lot easier to be a victim and blame other people for your circumstance instead of taking control of what you can. I'll give you some tips later on about how to move out of survive mode into thrive mode. So who decides uh, if you're going to be in survive or thrive mode? Who makes the decision? Yeah, you do. Your neighbor can't help you. Your kids can't help you. Your spouse can't help you. Uh, they can try to tell you, but the only one that can do it is you because unless you decide to do it, nothing's going to happen. All right? Here's four characteristics uh, in the book that Susie and I uh, laid out. Now, it was interesting when uh, Susie and I uh, were writing this book. I'll tell you a little story real quick. Uh, I was going through a very, very difficult relationship challenge at the time. And uh, it was, it was uh, very challenging for me. It was really challenging for the family. I mean, everybody that was around us. And I remember being at the coffee at the table one day, and I was, I'm a coffee drinker, and so I like to get up early in the morning and do some reading. And as I was kind of meditating, just for some reason, I started writing down all the things. I was, I was feeling like this. I was acting like this. I was um, behaving like this. Uh, and I ended up with, a, when I got done, I ended up with about 21 different characteristics of things I was thinking, acting, and doing, okay? And then the uh, next thing I did is I took another column, and I started looking at each item and said, okay, is it healthy to do that, or is it healthier to do something else? And then I just started going back and forth between each item. A couple of days later, uh, somebody from United Way called me, and they said, Step, we need to have somebody come speak at an event. Uh, do you have anything that would be appropriate? And I said, well, I'm working on this idea right now uh, called Beyond Surviving. And she booked it. She said, okay, we're going to book it. And I said, well, I haven't written it yet. And she said, we're you got two months because this is what we need. We have all these nonprofits out there, and they are just sur surviving. They need to go beyond surviving. That's how I started this project. And then I got a whole Susie when they did it, and I said, listen, I need you to help me turn this into a presentation that is going to be helpful. Um, they had to change the venue uh, two or three times because they kept getting more people signing up for this two-hour event. And after we did the event, Susie and I decided, we're not going to do another one of these events until we write, we've written a book. So we've written a book, and this is probably one out of about um, um, several dozen presentations that we've done. So this is pretty early on. So you guys are kind of in some of the first wave of this. There are four characteristics of surviving. Let me go through them with you. Uh, number one, when you're in survive mode, you're in self-preservation, and that's what happens. When you feel hurt, when you feel scared, when you feel worried, you go into self-preservation. And by the way, that's very healthy. Okay, the good news is you can do that, right? The bad news is that you do that because that's exactly where you can get stuck. And you feel shocked, withdrawn, and helpless. And you need people to come beside you when you're in that uh, particular mode to actually get you to the next place, okay? And I'll, and I'll share with you in just a little bit the type of people you need around you when this begins to happen. Number two, uh, you'll find that you are in a victim mentality, okay? Survivors uh, become uh, the victims, and everybody else can become what? The villain, all right? And we're in a victim mode. It helps us to do what? Helps us to justify our excuses, and our behavior uh, because we start blaming, uh, we feel hopeless, uh, we're, more, we're more emotional, 
Uh, it's not a good time to be making major decisions. You need a team of people around you to help balance that out. All right? Uh, the third one is parasite. Doesn't that sound lovely? You know, that you'd be characterized as what? A parasite? What does a parasite do? Yeah, it leeches on to you. It becomes very codependent, all right? And it, be, it actually uh, latches on to a host and just draws energy from them. Do you know people like that? Yeah, you get around them. Yeah, and I've been that sometime. I remember when I was going through this experience, and I didn't really realize it, but every time I would get with somebody, I would have to talk about this experience. Almost to the point, I was with one of my pastor friends one day. We sat down for coffee, and he said, you've got 10 minutes to talk about this experience, and I don't want to hear another word about it. And yeah, and I said, what are you talking about? And he says, every time we get together or on the phone, you switch to the hurt and pain. And he said, Step, you need to just grow in that area, but you need to stop talking about it. It's because, you, you know, you, when, you're hurt, when you're hurting, you want others to know that you're uh, justified in your behaviors and your actions. And honestly, if you're not careful, you become a parasite. And to them, you're sucking the life out of them. You can do that, too, in small ways. Um, you can be in the office, and, and you're trying to maintain a level of confidence, but you don't feel very confident. You worry about the economy. You don't have enough in your pipeline. You don't have enough things going on. You don't have enough closes going on. And uh, then you can start complaining. And, and, and every time you show up, you start what? Complaining. And then every time you get with somebody, you're complaining about how bad things are. And that becomes a parasite mentality. Uh, you become passive instead of putting a plan together and acting on that plan. Uh, you, you actually choose to do nothing. Another thing that happens is you're absorbing energy and you become emotional. We talked about that just a while ago. Um, you also become the fourth characteristic of somebody that's in survive mode is you're an actor. Okay. Now, how many have ever done any acting? You ever done any acting in school and stuff like that? Yeah, you have to do a lot of acting. Well, what do actors do? I, I uh, recently, well, not recently, a couple of years ago, I had a contract with a company out of New York, and my, I have a daughter that's, uh, she's 17 now at the time, she was uh, 15 or 14, and uh, I surprised her and took her with me to New York, something that she's always wanted to do. And we went to one of those Broadway plays, and we went and saw a uh, Spelling Bee. It was a wonderful play, by the way. And, and I noticed that the, uh, people were laughing, the actors were doing their part. But somebody behind these actors was really controlling what was happening. Isn't that right? The actors were just reciting the information or the lines that they were given to them. And so I thought that was a good illustration when we were writing this book that people are in survive mode are really actors. Um, they have a can't be done a mentality, their present focus, and they're unsure about their identity. It's like an actor. They're not, they don't really know who they are. They just are who they are based on what somebody else says. Okay? Four characteristics of surviving.